Now, studies show that 45% of people agree that women in Ireland simply grin and bear it when it comes to the taboo health issue of incontinence, while over half of women admit to having experienced weak bladder issues. To mark World Continence Week, we are joined by Helen Devaney, who suffered with bowel and bladder problems for more than five years. Also joining us is physiotherapist Aoife Niyoki. You're both very welcome this morning, ladies, Aoife, but yeah. most especially Helen, because there will be so many women watching right now who have never spoken about this to anyone, who keep it a secret to themselves, and you're here very bravely talking about it openly, because we said in our introduction, it is a taboo and there is, a, you know, embarrassment and shame mm. attached to it. So I applaud you and I salute you, as do the women across the land who are watching you this morning. Yeah. Can you start to tell us about when you first began to experience issues, Helen? Um, uh, first of all, you have your children and then the menopause and then you have a life then because your children are go gone. But now you have an issue. You have every time you want to go to the toilet, you have a leak. And you come to a situation where you get um, embarrassed. You don't want to go out anywhere because you feel that if you go out, you'll, you'll wet. Um, small things like going to the toilet, uh, going to the toilet in public areas. Um, you're going to the toilet, you know you had, had an accident. You're going to be a while in there and you're thinking, people are outside, oh God, she's ages inside. You know, is she, she, is she all right? And uh, when you come out, you're embarrassed, you know, and um, that went on for a while. And I went into my GP and I said, look, I need help. So he referred me to Aoife. She gave me so much guidance. If initially, first, I had to learn about exercise, like for a simple thing to go to the toilet. I was I, there was a right way when you have bladder in con of, of sitting on a toilet and how to empty your bladder like exercise, like now when I get the urge to go to the toilet, I stop. I do my uh, pelvic uh, muscle and uh, hold and I count one, two, three, and then I continue on. Another problem I was having is when I want a glass of water, I take the glass and I drink it. No, 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 that's not the way you do it. True Aoife's guidance. I learned how to drink water, to sip it, and take it one glass over an hour. You learn too that after a meal, you go to a, to a toilet a half an hour afterwards. Now, the physical exercise was, um, was good, but I learned too, uh, I got to use um, the um, electro stimulation. At first, there was a small machine and that helped good, but then this one here, you put it on and it was excellent. Now, another thing too, a lot, of, you had to look at food and you had to look at food and drink and what caused your problems. Can I interrupt you, Helen, to ask, did you ex begin to experience these problems after you'd had your children or when did it really kick in for you? Um, in menopause, you know, menopause, pause, okay. yeah, yeah, it became... And did you tell anyone? I talked with my sisters. Um, and, and did your sisters say, oh, sure, we're the same or... You know, did you feel comfortable telling them the full extent at which you, you know, you felt like you lost control at points? Um, I think women, women um, amongst each other, um, they would, you know, women are great ones in doctors, in doctors, uh, sort of to talk and, you know, and yeah. Because um, it really did affect your life. I mean, you stopped yeah, going out. No, yeah, yeah. You, know, you stopped yeah. wearing nice things. I mm. mean, you became a total social recluse. Yeah. And it affected your confidence dramatically. Oh, yeah, uh, yeah. Immensely. Like going for, just for example, like I, I'm originally from Castle and Tipperary. And just going on a journey, it was, I'd stop five or six times. So you'd you be know? terrified at the prospect of having to go somewhere oh, that yeah. was far away. Oh yeah, like yesterday now coming up, once. 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 And, and the times when I have travelled down the country, I never had to stop since getting um, help. Aoife, can we bring you in here? Uh, by the way, this is not, strictly speaking, a female problem. I not mean, there are a lot of uh, men of, of a certain age who, yes. and they get to a certain age, it takes them five minutes to get going, and it can take them five minutes to stop. And in some cases, it can go on for a little longer than that. Yes, so it isn't just a female-only problem. <clears throat> and, and actually, you were saying to me before we started that the exercises that women do, the Kegel exercises, yes. are, and men can also do the, an equivalent of that. Absolutely, yeah. Men's pelvic floors actually aren't all that different from the female pelvic floor. So absolutely. Men, I suppose one of the main reasons men might have problems with bladder control would be in relation to the prostate gland. And certainly some men that have prostate surgery may go on to have mm. some difficulties. Now, some of those difficulties in the early period after surgery would be quite normal. 
but then a certain number of men, approximately 20%, will go on to have more serious difficulties and those are the sort of men that I would see in my clinic. Mm. Uh, there are other reasons, Mark, as well, we just alluded as well, you know, sometimes if you can have a bowel dysfunction, if you have chronic constipation, that can impact in men and in women on the bowel, oh, sorry, on the bladder. Um, for example, if you might have a, a condition like Crohn's disease or inflammatory bowel disease, colitis, colitis a, a respiratory condition where you're coughing, sneezing. If you're on medication for other um, conditions, it can have an impact. There's also another condition called prostatitis, uh, yes. which can, yes. can um, yeah, lead to absolutely. that as well. Uh, listen, this machine um, um, or, or this um, yeah. demonstration dummy here that yes, you yes. brought along with you, uh, Helen referred to it. Is is um, what is this called, and yeah, what does it do? This is, this is electrical stimulation, and this is used in part of the physiotherapy journey. If the patient, man or woman, cannot contract their pelvic floor exercises correctly, so this gadget. Uh, allows the man or woman to find the muscles. So the physiotherapist or a doctor, or sometimes we use scanning methods, a dynamic MRI imaging, real-time ultrasound, and we will know the quality of the contraction. The patient will be able to tell you whether they can do it. Some patients won't know what you're talking about. So it's a, it's a step, one step. If you get... would, would you be able to give us an exercise? We can all engage yeah, our pelvic floor would... muscles as we chat. Yes. But for people to, that they can do at <clears throat> home. I would be so delighted. maybe just talk us through it. Yeah, now I have a female um, pelvis okay. here. I'll but Mark can join in. Layer. Yeah, <laughs> now, as I say, so um, if I could say as well, I think it's important to know where these muscles are. Okay. So this is um, a female pelvis. You can see it here. So this uh, section here, everything in red is pelvic floor muscle. Okay. The yellow is nerve, just out of interest. And the gray is uh, ligaments and fascia. And so the pelvic floor muscles, as I put my hand on the base of the pelvis, you can see the pelvic floor muscles in men or wi and women are like a pair of hands together. Now, these, these muscles are thin and skinny, just to say that they're very fine. They're unlike other muscles in the body. And to strengthen them, say, as a quick, simple exercise, if you were to tighten your back passage, as if you were trying to control gas, and if you could do that before you cough, sneeze, lift, that would provide a bracing and may prevent a leak and is one step in, you know, in strengthening the pelvic floor. And that's called the knack. It's an American term. Moving on from that, then you could do what we call a low grade knack. So the first one is sort of 100 percent tightening of the back passage. So you could do a smaller, a 30 percent tightening approximately, just, mm -hmm. just that it wouldn't be training at 100 percent level. And if you could keep that back passage muscle engaged while you stand initially, that would work the floor of the pelvis against gravity. And then to move it on, if you could do that while you're walking, every step you take, the weight of each leg would act through the muscles. So they are easy so things that people can do at home. Knacks. Would make no. a huge difference. Okay. Huge difference. Helen, you'd agree, I'd say, would, with yeah, those. Yeah. Um, I would say to anyone, for the 30 degree, you know, the one when you're walking, what I, what I did was I'd walk, I'd hold it and say one, two, three, four, and I'd do it 30 seconds and then I'd stop and, and then I'd go on and hold it and you'll build it up, you know, and you will get it. Uh, Aoife, is there a website that people can find out more information on? Yes, there is. There's a Galway Clinic. You can contact us um, for more information and uh, this product here, I think you're going to be putting up the details of where to, yeah, to contact. Great. This is a Galway-based product, Helen, if I could say. thank you for talking about this because it's difficult to talk about and I know a lot of women will be very glad that you did this morning. So thank you very much. Well done. Thank you. Now, let's take the news. Uh, here's Caroline.